All right. Well, I'm going to say it's 430. So we're still in the afternoon. So I'm going to say good afternoon, everyone. So this is Chair Reen Moran, pursuit of House Rule 10.01. I call this remote meeting of the House Ways and Means Committee to order. Ms. Sparkman, will you please take the roll? Chair Moran. Present. Moran, present. Vice Chair Olson. Present. Olson, present. Representative Garofalo. Present. Garofalo, present. Representative Albright. Present. Albright, present. Representative Becker Finn. Present. Becker Finn, present. Representative Bernardi. <coughs> Representative Bernardi. Representative Eckland. Present. Eckland, present. Representative Hansen. Present. Hansen, present. Representative Hassan. Hassan, present. Hassan, present. Representative Hertos. Hertos present. Hertos present. Representative Hornstein. Present. Hornstein present. Representative Johnson. Johnson present. Johnson present. Representative Kresha. Kresha present. Representative Hertos tells Sharon hi. Kresha present. Representative Liebling. Present. Liebling present. Representative Lilly. Lilly present. Lilly present. Representative Mariani. Representative Mariani. Representative Marquardt excused. Representative Miller. Miller present. Miller present. Representative Nash excused. Representative Nelson. Nelson present. Nelson present. Representative Noor. Noor present. Noor present. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill present. O'Neill present. <laughs> Representative Pulowski. Pulowski present. Pulowski present. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg present. Petersburg present. Representative Pinto. Present. Pinto present. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher present. Schumacher present. Representative Schultz. Present. Schultz present. Representative Scott. Present. Scott present. Representative Sundin. Representative Sundin. Representative Bernardi. Representative Mariani. Representative Sundin. That concludes the role. There is a quorum present. Thank you, Ms. Sparkman. A quorum is present. So our first agenda item is approval of the minutes for my hearing on Monday, April the 26th. The minutes were included in the hearing documents emailed to you by committee staff. Are there any questions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, um, Vice Chair Olson, would you like to approve the minutes from April the 26th? Yes, Madam Chair, that's my motion. Thank you. Representative Olson, Olson moves approval of the minutes for April the 26th, 2021. Please unmute briefly for a voice vote. All in, uh, in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. So remember, we have one bill on our agenda this evening, which is House File 600. But before we take that up, we would need to amend the budget the budget resolution in order to make sure that the bill is fully paid for in the next biennium. So the chair will move the third engrossment of house budget resolution titled Buzz Red 01-3 before the committee and offer the A1 amendment. This amendment reduces the budget reserves target for the biennium by 23.235 million and increases total authorized and increases total authorized general fund spending by that same amount. The rest of the calls for House File 600 will be covered by the other bills targets. 
which has an additional $35 million available now that Senate file 1345 was re-referred back to the committee yesterday. Leader Winkler, did you have any comments on this amendment as it relates to your bill? Uh, Madam Chair, I do not comment on the Ways of the Ways and Means Committee. I leave this one to you, and I'll present my bill when that's when that time comes. All right, thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments from members before we vote on the amendment to the budget resolution? Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Albright. Madam Chair, uh, I'm looking at the spreadsheet as well as the budget resolution, and I'm wondering if you could... Um, I heard what you said, but from my looking at it, we're moving uh, 23.235 million from the budget reserve account. Mm -hmm. And then 35 million, we're defunding the SAFE Act and, and moving that money to House File 600. Is that correct? That is correct. That's my thought. Uh, a representative, uh, Leader Wink Winkler. Madam Chair and Representative Albright, that is the plan for uh, funding this in the first biennium. Then the revenue from Canvas legalization uh, picks up from there to replenish that money back into the budget reserve. Representative uh, Albright. Madam Chair, um, you know, I've sat on Ways and Means for a number of terms now. And, and the first thing that I would pose to you is just from a, a, a position of, of definition, the budget reserve account from my recollection in terms past has, has been utilized only if necessary in terms of rainy day or in other uh, terms as when I was vice chair, when there was an anomaly that was experienced by the revenue received into uh, MMB uh, and the treasury for the benefit of the state in terms of keeping, keeping the float, uh, if you will, uh, for the state uh, fairly consistent with that being said, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering if you could uh, explain to me from your perspective why this uh, a change in the budget resolution is necessary to fund uh, a bill that doesn't fit either one of those definitions under what has been uh, custom and usage of the budget reserve. Yes, Representative Albright. Um, I understand and I do hear you that um, in the past, um, according to your tenure here in the legislature, that the budget, budget resolution has not been um, um, increased or decreased in the way it has been done at this moment. But um, I think you and many other members know that um, House File 600 is uh, a priority bill for our body. And um, in order to move it through the body, this is a process that we have to go through at this moment to allow the funding to be there. And so it, I, I believe it's a practice that can happen um, that allows me as chair to, uh, uh, to create this opportunity for that to happen. Um, if representative, if a leader Winkler would like to add to that, uh, he can, but um, that's where we are in this process at the moment. Madam Chair, uh, Representative Albright, the only other thing I would add is that as we are putting together the overall budget this session, the target for the budget reserve is also in play along with this, uh, the spending in this bill. So while this change will move the target for the reserve uh, in the House, it isn't changing the actual budget reserve. And that will be negotiated out and uh, in the next, hopefully in the next uh, 10 days or so. Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple more questions and they're more of clarification. Um, so to uh, Representative Winkler's perspective then, uh, we are changing the number on the budget reserve prior to having a global budgetary target agreement in place. Um, so I just want to make sure that that is the understanding of the body as well. Um, I, I make no per se judgment on that, but uh, my, my 
other question would be, and I might have others, but with regard to the House File 445, you are relinquishing all financial uh, opportunity for that bill, the SAFE Act, by 35 million uh, to enable House File 600. Is that correct? So um, you referenced House File 445. Um, what we did, we brought back Senate File 1345, which I, I'm guessing is the companion bill to House File 1345. 1354. Yes, 1345. Yes, that would be correct. Um, and so right now with this resolution, it, it really comes down to what uh, you and, and Representative Winkler said is you're choosing a new priority. You're choosing uh, the, the, the House File 600 over the SAFE Act as a priority of your caucus going forward. I just, I just wanted to lay that out there uh, as, as an understanding of what this decision and this, this budget amendment does. Yeah. And I would, I'm sorry, go ahead, Representative Albright. Uh, I'm sure that uh, others will have questions, but Madam Chair, before it gets away from me and before I forget, I would request a roll call on the amendment to the budget resolution. Yeah. Uh, Representative Albright, I wouldn't say that we're choosing to one over the other, but I would say that we are. Um, clearly funding cannabis and law enforcement through this money. That's, that's what I, I can say um, that we are doing. Both are important to this body. Uh, so, but for now, this is how we're gonna proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, so do we have members? Maybe I need to open this up so I can see if there's any other questions. Do we I have some more hands here. Representative Garofalo. Would you like to go first or last? Madam Chair, sorry, I'm having problems with the microphone. Uh, so I'll, I'll go last, Madam Chair. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Representative O'Neill. Hello, oh, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to express my deep concern with this shift. So we are defunding the SAFE Act. The police officers have already been paid through their local uh, municipalities, most likely, or the counties, whether it be city or county. I know in my county, they sent down several deputies. Many communities around Minneapolis and St. Paul sent down many deputies or police officers if they were from uh, a city. And this, you know, these officers have already been paid. Who is going to be short our cities and counties? So I don't really understand why we are defunding $35 million to refund our cities and our counties for responding to one of the most horrible, terrific, awful things that have ever happened to this state. I don't understand this. And then instead taking that money to fund legalizing marijuana. I don't understand what we're doing and why we're doing that. Are you going to, is there some plan to replenish the $35 million or is this just a priority saying it's not a priority? because this is actually even a governor's priority. Uh, so I don't really understand what we're doing here and why we're taking $35 million away from our cities and our counties that responded in our time of need here in the state and saying that's not a priority, but, marijuana, but legalizing marijuana is, because that's what we are doing with this vote. That is exactly what we're doing. I don't understand why, I do not agree with it, I think that we need to treat not only our law enforcement with better respect, but our cities and counties that sent their officers during our time of need. So I could not oppose this more. And I would ask uh, our members here to please vote no on defunding the SAFE Act and instead funding legalization of marijuana here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, Representative O'Neill, I am really excited to hear that you are supportive of the SAFE Act and all other members who are supportive of the state. I am, I'm like elated 
that you guys are aligned with that as a priority because that is a priority of the DFL. And, you know, we did pass separate funding for law enforcement with the deficit, with the deficiency bill the other week. And there's and plenty of money in other omnibus bills. That is, you know, um, this is not a, a if or or, it is an and. And so, um, again, I'm just excited to know that you are supporting the SAFE Act. Uh, Representative Johnson. Representative Johnson. Well, Chair Moran, a lot of concerns as well. I've had a number of communities, counties, and cities outside Hennepin County. The creation was spearheaded by the state, just a city or a, or a county, for the project went down to to help out with security issues. We paid the state patrol. We paid the state of Ohio. We paid the state of Nebraska. We sent people here as well. We paid the conservationers and, and we funded the money in their accounts. But by removing the spending in the SAFE Act, you're saying basically screw you every county and every city outside of Hennepin County that and Ramsey County that came down. This is what we do. Um, I can't oppose this any more strongly because you're just, you're, you're in the rest of the state. We don't care about you. The property taxpayers are are you're leaving it up to the property taxpayers in communities outside of that area area that can can't pay insult to Representative Johnson, you have really bad reception. Um, um Madam Chair, I, I think I had my hand up anyway before even I think before Representative Johnson. And maybe he'll get a better connection if I could. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw you representing Leveling. Um, okay. Ahead. All right, well, thank you, because, uh, Madam Chair, I was so glad to hear you make that statement, because I was sitting here racking my brains about this issue, because I remember voting for the SAFE Act, and I sort of remember that the Republicans did not vote for the SAFE Act, and I just hope that somebody could kind of remind me if that was the case. All of the support for the SAFE Act. I could have sworn that the bill did not pass the floor and that the Republicans did not vote for it. So I, I might need my memory refreshed here that now there's all this support for the SAFE Act, apparently, and people are shocked, shocked that a bill that was not able to pass the floor, you know, the money that was allocated for it. Um, is now being allocated back into the pot. And I mean, money is fungible, right? It's not like dollars from this are marked in blue and come back to be marked in green. The money is money. And, um, but just in terms of budget targets to um, be able to fund the cannabis bill, which by the way, is a very serious and important bill for the state. Um, you know, I, I'm just, anyway, I'm really just very surprised that um, may, maybe somebody can refresh my memory because I could have sworn I voted for the SAFE Act and that Republicans did not. Yep. Uh, Representative uh, Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, um, you know, there are several counties and and cities that sent help to Minneapolis. My county was one of them. Um, St. Louis County sent people, Olmstead County sent people, Brooklyn Park PD sent people, Ramsey County sent people, and we owe it to them to pay them back. And Representative Liebling, the reason we didn't put up the votes for the SAFE Act when you brought it to the floor originally is there were some gigantic pills, 
poison pills in there that were anti-law enforcement that were going to put our law enforcement officers in greater danger. So that is why we didn't support the policy part of that bill. But we obviously support reimbursing these counties and cities that sent their law enforcement to the aid, the much needed aid of Minneapolis. So members, this is, this is sending a message to the public that passing legalized weed is more important, is more important than funding law enforcement. It's more important than public safety and making these local units of um, uh, agencies of law enforcement whole again. So this should be a no brainer for everybody and everybody should be su not supporting um, this, um, this amendment. Um, I will be voting no. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, you're welcome, uh, Representative Scott. Uh, Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, Representative Liebling, uh, I think Olmstead County sent some folks up to help the uh, people in, in Minneapolis as well. So I'm sure that uh, you would want, as as a, as a supporter of law enforcement in your own community, that that service rendered is compensated for. Um, and and to your point about that, you are confused about uh, the Republican uh, caucus members. Uh, supporting SAFE Act or supporting uh, uh, medical cannabis, uh, the commercialization of cannabis. I, I think, you know, that's a, that's a play on words. I think what we're saying is that we're, we're a bit surprised in terms of the focus of your caucus changing from time to time when uh, the leader of your uh, party uh, has as its, his, one of his priorities, the SAFE Act. So, um, we're just a bit confused as well in terms of where your priorities stand. Um, it's a bit, like you say, fungible, but you know, I, I think sometimes uh, your party uh, and your caucus are starting to play with uh, the budget as if it's monopoly money and you can run around and collect your $200 and pass go as many times as you want. Um, we have to be stewards of the dollars that have been uh, provided to us by the taxpayers. Uh, with that said, uh, choose your priorities. We're just trying to clarify for our understanding where you stand, not where we stand. So I did, okay, let's see here. Um, and I, I do just want to remind members uh, again, you know, that we did fund law enforcement, right? We did that. We recognize that they showed up. But we also just was it last week or two ago that we fund police officers, law enforcement? And so I, I just need to say that, and but also say that, you know, um, there was a tragedy that happened, right? There's a there was a deep tragedy that happened, and that terrible thing that was that happened is that it, you know last year and the year before that and the year before that is the criminalization of, you know, black men. That's the tragedy that we consistently see happen here in this state. And quite frankly, you know, the passage of House File 600 will help with that, that criminalization that we see happen over and over and over in this state. And so uh, um, we can do both, and we have done both. We fund law enforcement. We took care of that. And now we're moving to also move forward to fund, um, to legalize marijuana and make sure that we can properly fund it. And so uh, Representative Mariani, Well, Madam Chair and, and, and members, and I really did not want to get into this uh, this debate. And I understand, you know, uh, that part of what we do up here, uh, unfortunately, is to throw, you know, rhetorical frames at each other and, you know, one, one up each other. But, you know, it's one thing to do that. It's another thing uh, to make false claims about what 
uh, is it a bill and what's not in a bill? We can agree and disagree about what those elements are, but to mischaracterize, uh, for example, the SAFE Act as possessing uh, anti-law enforcement provisions is just patently false. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the bill that I amended, because I was the author of that bill, the bill that I amended on the floor of the House had the major law enforcement uh, associations, the chiefs, the sheriffs, the rank and filers, uh, encouraging folks to vote for it. They certainly had uh, issues and questions about that. Uh, but one, they knew that we were going to amend it to a point where they can accept that for now. And two, it was critically important for them at that point in time for us to move a bill forward so that we can then meet the Senate that didn't have any of those provisions. So then we can do what, what a legislature does, which is we conferee the bills and we come to an accord. And even with that common sense approach, not a single, not one, not a single Republican voted for that bill. The vast majority of the Democrats did. That's the truth. And all you gotta do is look at the voting record, not listen to what we say here, but look at the voting record. And so, you know, Madam Chair, members, you know, uh, I get it, you know, we're gonna have differences of opinions, but to falsely characterize the um, bills before us and the votes that we then take is just out of bounds. Let me just add as well that um, not too long ago, we came back and we did a deficiency funding. I authored that bill as well. Deficiency funding for state law enforcement expenses that were legitimate expenses relative to preparation to help keep the public safe. And let me just further add, because there seems to be this sort of, you know, boogeyman characterization of Minneapolis. And I'm not a Minneapolitan, I'm a St. Paulite. And believe me, you know, we wrestle with our cousins across the river uh, pretty fiercely. But quite frankly, you know, when there was a shooting out in, Ray, in Wright County, you all remember this, this is what, six weeks ago? You know, one of the major and earliest responders to that shooting was Minneapolis. Minneapolis sent out its bomb squad, sent out investigators. They didn't even question doing that. And they did that in the midst of anxiety over what might, have, what might occur at that point uh, relative to the trial of Officer Chauvin, a police officer who murdered an African-American citizen. But even in the midst of that uncertainty, they sent help out to Wright County because it's the right thing to do. And finally, members, right now I'm conferencing the public safety judiciary bill uh, with the Senate. We have the omnibus bill. And let me tell you, and you can go look at the bill. You know, our majority passed out a bill that provides way much more funding for law enforcement than what the Senate does. It's a fact by millions. We also have reform elements in that. And the reason we do that is because we believe you need to constantly do both. Our jobs I would submit <clears throat> is to constantly uh, question and adjust our policy frames so that we can change systems so that we can better serve Minnesotans, better serve Minnesotans. That doesn't mean we tear apart law enforcement. It doesn't mean we tear apart anything else. It means we expect it to better serve. And at the same time, because we honor that work and we know it's critically important, we make sure that we properly resource it. So Madam Chair, you know, I, you know, I really, I seriously did not want to say a word uh, during this hearing. It's Friday, you know, I just had conference this morning. I just wanted to chill listen to the debate on both sides and then cast my votes. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to stay quiet. Well, and I know that's game playing, but even in game playing, you know, there are rules and there are bounds, you know, and mischaracterizing the bill that I had on the floor of the house with the SAFE Act, um, the way we heard it mischaracterized here before was way out of bounds. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. 
Thank you, Representative Mariani, and thank you for your work as chair of the Public Safety Committee and your commitment to looking uh, at public safety um, through many different lenses of how we can protect the citizens uh, of Minnesota, uh, in Minnesota. Really appreciate your work. Okay, we have Representative Albright, and then we're going to go to Representative Garofalo. Representative thank you, Madam Albright. Chair. And thank you, Madam Chair. My question is for the fiscal staff. I just have a question with regard to the revised fiscal note. Uh, and under the fiscal note, as I would understand it, um, we're looking at in the biennium about a 61 million uh, 396 uh, uh, outlay, but yet we're uh, funding it appropriating 58.235. I, am I missing something in terms of the balancing between appropriation and expenditure? And I'm wondering if someone could help me out with, with my, uh, my question. Mr. Marks? Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to defer to Ms. Beckel on that. She's much more familiar with the fiscal note than I am. Okay. I, hope, I believe she's on. Okay. Um, Madam Chair? Mr. Beckel, yes, please proceed. Introduce yourself and then proceed. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Solvay Beckel. I'm with House Fiscal Analysis. Uh, yes, so um, there have been many versions of the spreadsheet, certainly. Um, uh, the committee administrator did post um, the most recent spreadsheet to uh, the committee website, I believe, um, shortly before the committee began. Um, but there are definitely revenues um, that are not uh, mentioned in the bill because um, they are, are not explicitly stated, but they are from the revenue estimate that the Department of Revenue um, sent out so there will be revenues from the cannabis gross receipts tax, as well as from the sales tax. And then we are seeing revenues, um, according to uh, the fiscal note this time, um, from the Cannabis Management Board adult use license revenue, uh, as well as some department of... Oh, excuse me, as well as some Department of Human Services uh, federal financial participation. Um, so if you look at that most recent spreadsheet, uh, hopefully you can um, see where we have where, where I hopefully got those numbers correct um, to, to come to the 58.235 million uh, for the first biennium. Oh, thank you, Chris. Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Okay, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And if, uh, is um, Mr. Marks on the call or? Yes. The, okay, yes. Um, so Mr. Marks, I wanna make sure we're working off the BudRes 01-3-A1 uh, budget resolution. And my question is that, as I'm looking at this on line 1.4, this is where we're, we're increasing the overall amount of spending and on uh, line 1.5 is where we are, are reducing the allocation to the budget reserve. Is that correct? Mr. Marks. Madam Chair, Representative Garofalo, that is correct. Thank you. And Madam Chair and, and Mr. Mr. Marks, um, in light of the fact that the omnibus bills have passed off of the uh, House floor, um, outside of the SAFE Act, are there any other bill, any other ways that this uh, um, this could be construed that the SAFE Act is being defunded. Is there, is there an, um, for example, the capital investment bill is sitting out there. I think that has a target. Are there other areas outside of the SAFE Act to be, that could be interpreted as being cut uh, from this change? Mr. Marks. Um, Mr. Madam Chair, Representative Garofalo, the, the capital expenditure bill is uh, in ways and means that uh, has not passed out of ways and means, but there is a specific target for that bill um, in the resolution. And uh, my understanding is that bill is within that target. So, uh, and then the, uh, I think you're at, the answer would be, there are no other bills that I'm aware of. Uh, if you look at the spreadsheet, there is still a, uh, a $505,000 amount sitting in the other bills area that is, uh, is unallotted essentially at this point. Um, it's uh, down under the other bills. The last line says other bills, 505,000, and, and that's not specifically allocated yet. 
Okay, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Mark. Thank you for that. So, uh, I recognize that the change in the budget resolution today is being done. Uh, and there's a reasonable debate to be had on whether to fund House File 600, but what has happened with this change in the budget resolution is that there is a reduction in the SAFE Act, and I just don't think that that is something that is something we should be supporting as a committee. So, Madam Chair, I'm going to move an amendment to your budget resolution uh, amendment, and that amendment will be as follows, and I'll go slow here so that it doesn't, uh, and uh, nonpartisan staff can correct me if I do it wrong. But uh, my amendment to the BUDRES 01-3-A10 amendment will be as follows. On uh, page one, line four, uh, delete 52,601,053,000 and replace it with uh, 52,626,053,000. And then on uh, page five, line, excuse me, page one, line five, Delete one billion seven hundred twelve million seven hundred and fifteen thousand. Excuse me, and uh, replace that with one billion six hundred eighty-seven million seven hundred fifteen thousand. And the intent uh, to nonpartisan staff, what I'm attempting to do, is delete the cut for safe funding from the budget resolution, and instead take the funding for House File Six Hundred and take it from the budget reserve. The effect of this will be that it will restore. Uh, the SAFE Act funding and nonpartisan staff can confirm or correct me if that is if I, if I have verbalized my intent properly with in terms of the numbers I've supplied. Can someone from nonpartisan staff please um, repeat uh, Representative Garofalo uh, amendment or verbal amendment and um, ensure us that it is as he intended? Madam Chair, I'm checking the numbers. If okay. each number is changed by 35 million, it should be correct. Oh, well then, Madam Chair, my numbers are wrong then because I did 25 million. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that, uh, so that first number, my apologies, I'll, I'll restate the numbers for you, Mr. Marks. Uh, so again, page one, line four, um, the 52,601,053,000 would be replaced with 52,636,053,000. And then page one, line five, the one point one billion seven hundred twelve million seven hundred fifteen thousand would instead be replaced by one billion six hundred seventy seven million seven hundred fifteen thousand. And that would that's the thirty five, not the twenty five. Mr. Marks. Um, Madam Chair, uh, that should work. That's that's that would increase total spending by 35 million above the proposed amount and increase or decrease the budget reserve by 35 million up below the proposed amount. And so, um, Madam Chair and, um, yep, uh, Madam Chair and uh, members. So uh, we've, we've heard some DFL members talking cute about how they, today they want to fund the SAFE Act and they're big supporters of it. And here you go. This restores the SAFE Act funding. We can uh, get everyone in the committee to vote for it. We can finish this up, debate House File 600, and get out to a very nice day. And so I would ask members to support my amendment to the amendment, and I would request a roll call on that. Again, this, uh, this amendment to the amendment simply uh, restores the SAFE Act funding. Thank you. Representative Garofalo, you know, that is like a significant amendment that you are making here. But because I like you, I'm gonna, we're gonna move on this, right? Um, <laughs> we're gonna move on this and vote on this. Um, so uh, if um, Mr. Marks can repeat that amendment so that we can take a vote on that, that would be nice. Madam Chair, on, on the amendment uh, on line 1.4, delete 52, Six zero one zero five three zero zero zero, and insert fifty two six three six zero five three zero zero zero. And on page one, line five, delete the one billion seven one two seven one five zero zero zero, and insert one billion six seven 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 one five zero zero zero. So that is the amendment to the amendment members. I will ask for a no vote 
Uh, Ms. Sparkman, can you take the roll? Chair Moran? No. Moran, no. Vice Chair Olson? No. Olson, no. Representative Garofalo? Yes. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? Yes. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn? No. Becker Finn, no. Representative Bernardi, excused. Representative Eklund? No. Eklund, no. Representative Hansen? No. Hansen, no. Representative Hassan? Representative Hassan? Representative Hurtos? Hurtos, yes. Hurtos, aye. Representative Hornstein? No. Hornstein, no. Representative Johnson? Aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Kresha? Kresha, aye. Kresha, aye. Representative Liebling? No. Liebling, no. Representative Lilly? Lilly, no. Lilly, no. Representative Mariani? Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Representative Marquardt, excused. Representative Miller? Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash, excused. Representative Nelson? No. Nelson, no. Representative Noor? No. Noor, no. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, no. Pulowski, no. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto? Pinto, no. Pinto, no. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz? Schultz, no. Schultz, no. Representative Scott? Scott, aye. Scott, aye. Representative Sundin? No. Sundin, no. Representative Hassan? Hassan, no. Hassan, no. There are 10 ayes and 16 nays. There have been 10 ayes and 16 nays. The motion does not prevail. So with that, I uh, see no further. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, I recognize that we're gonna be having a debate on House File 600 later, and there'll be a di diversity of opinion on that. Uh, but what we are seeing is the DFL is deliberately targeting law enforcement funding to pay for that bill today. We just gave you a chance to use the budget resolution. There's plenty of resources available to fund both these items. And you guys specifically are targeting law enforcement funding uh, for reductions. Uh, for that and other reasons, I'm urging members to vote no on this change. Thank you. And again, uh, we have funded law enforcement through the deficiency bill. Um, so there have been no further discussion. The chair renews her motion to adopt the A-01 amendment to the budget Madam, resolution. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did request a roll call. For the um, A-1 a amendment? Adoption of the amendment to the resolution. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Sparkman, can you please take the roll? Chair Moran. Uh, to the A, this is to the A01 amendment. Yes. Moran, aye. aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright. No. Albright, no. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi, excused. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen? Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan? Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtos? Hurtos, no. Hurtos, no. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? No. Johnson, no. Representative Kresha? Yeah. Kresha, no. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt, excused. 
Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash, excused. Representative Nelson? Aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? No, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto? Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz? Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin? Aye. Sundin, aye. There's 16 ayes and 10 nays. There have been 16 ayes and 10 nays. The um, A01 amendment um, is passed. So now, members, we will proceed to the bill itself. So the chair will move that House File 600 be recommended for placement on the general register. Leader Winkler, you do have an A42 author's amendment with some substantive changes. Would you like to present your bill first and then uh, you can take up the amendments? Madam Chair, I'm happy to do that. House File 600 is the cannabis legalization bill. Uh, I wanna first say that House Research has done incredible work, uh, particularly Ben Johnson in working with us on this bill. This is our 12th committee hearing, and in addition to drafting many uh, substantive amendments, which we'll get to, and uh, helping coordinate a major drafting and research effort, Mr. Johnson also penned a version of uh, Johnny Cash's I've Been Everywhere for this bill. And I would be remiss if I didn't share his lyrics with you. Uh, it's I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to commerce, labor, workforce development, agriculture, environment, rules and judiciary, state government, education, public safety, health committee, taxes now and ways and means. We've been everywhere. Uh, Madam Speaker, members, this is an important bill. Uh, it does, uh, it helps to correct wrongs that have been done for too long in Minnesota to communities who've been over-policed, who have been targeted for cannabis enforcement to uh, further a policy of prohibition of cannabis that does not work. We have concerns about youth access to cannabis or overuse and substance use disorder. People are concerned about uh, driving on roadways uh, where people may be impaired by cannabis. Our current laws do nothing to effectively prevent those harms. By legalizing and creating a safe marketplace, by taxing cannabis and using the proceeds from those taxes to pay for cannabis uh, regulation uh, to help invest in a cannabis industry that reflects the values of Minnesotans and helps to uh, address the harms caused by cannabis prohibition on our uh, black and brown communities, especially House File 600 is a significant improvement over our current cannabis policy. Uh, the uh, fiscal note and the appropriations in the bill reflect the need to create a marketplace and get it started. Uh, cannabis will more than pay for itself in the future. And in fact, the bill even contains a provision uh, that says that any excess revenue collected from cannabis taxes will go to a tax relief account. The goal of this bill is not to increase spending in other areas. It is to do a better job of regulating cannabis and making Minnesota actually a success in how it deals with this substance. So uh, members, I ask for your support. I think the uh, author's amendment is primarily uh, a set of technical corrections uh, and small adjustments. I don't know that you'd need a detailed uh, walkthrough of that. Thank you, Leader Winkler. Members, are there any questions or comments um, on the A42 author's amendment? Um, so Chair, I think you'll still need to move the amendment first. Oh, okay. Well, you're right. <laughs> so the chair renews a motion to adopt the A42 author's amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. The, the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Um, so we have another amendment that we're going to go to. Representative Hurtas, 
uh, you have two amendments. Would you like to offer the A41 first and tell us about it? Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I will move uh, the A41 amendment for consideration for House File 600. Um, members, what I, uh, in our hearing that uh, Representative Winkler mentioned all of the the bills, uh, hearings that have been in committee on this issue uh, in Texas uh, earlier this week, uh, I asked the question about whether or not uh, we were going to have any type of disclosure uh, to those who are buying cannabis under Minnesota license uh, distributors. And uh, I think it's really important uh, that we're creating a new industry here that is being sanctioned by government and I think it's appropriate that with the sale of all of these products, that there be a product disclosure, making sure that particularly a new generation of uh, younger users understand that cannabis uh, still remains a Schedule I drug uh, under federal law. And I think that we have a duty to inform uh, those potential users that uh, use of it uh, is in conflict with that federal law and that it could result in uh, criminal penalties, fines, or even possible imprisonment. Uh, I would add members that uh, we've become aware uh, over the last many years of stories that we've heard in our committees about people uh, going to college and getting degrees and making application uh, and having to have background checks done and finding that some of their conduct when they were younger uh, has come to surface and denies them the ability to gain uh, employment or have gainful employment in their preferred area of practice. I, I recall, not related to cannabis, but just as an example, I recall a few years back, uh, Representative Moline uh, had a young lady who uh, was uh, doing a press conference when the governor was signing a bill about her ability to um, some, some things she had done when she was a uh, young and a teenager, she was trying to get a job and they did a background check on her and found out that uh, some of these violations precluded her from uh, getting employment. And, you know, I'm aware that uh, particularly with uh, those types of occupations, particularly in the health industry, and especially if it would be a federal job, like working at a VA or, or uh, those who are um, certain individuals, uh, not, not nurses alone, but PAs and other uh, practitioners who have access to controlled substances, the, the background is checked very frequently on that. So if, if somebody is thinking it's okay to use cannabis and there'd be no consequences, and especially if they're pursuing a career and are not yet uh, have a station in life where they're earning a living, uh, they should be made aware uh, of this conflict. And, and and lastly, I'll just close, even though it's legal in Minnesota, I wouldn't want young people to have uh, possession uh, legal limits or quantities in their possession and then unknowingly drive across state lines or get picked up in another state. So uh, where they don't have the protection. So I think this is a good idea. And I, I did uh, uh, give uh, Representative Winkler advance notice on this amendment, and I hope he would view it as a friendly amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Representative Winkler. Madam Chair, Representative Hurtas, I think I'm going to go uh, 500 with you today. Um, I th uh, the second amendment that you're uh, offering, I do intend to accept. This one, I like the um, general direction that you're going in. I think the language might be just a little bit over the top. But if you wanted to work with me on a floor amendment that uh, narrowed it down a little bit, I'd be open to that. So I would, I don't, uh, first of all, I also, I want to dispel the notion, yes, there are uh, federal violations. It is a schedule one, but in states that have legalized cannabis, the federal government does not enforce federal criminal penalties. Uh, that's been a policy that has uh, cut across administration. So there is a theoretical problem uh, in part. There could be a, a situation in the future in which somebody uh, had a federal conviction of some kind. Um, and I don't want to overstate the, the danger. And I think this language overstates it somewhat. And I also don't want to create the perception 
that uh, we're not addressing things like expungement of records, uh, which we are in this bill. So anybody with a current conviction uh, for a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor or a petty misdemeanor could have those convictions automatically expunged and they would not appear in a, in a background check in the future. So I, I don't want to create a mixed message that somehow this is exposing you to more le legal liability than you are. Um, and so I am willing to work with you on some kind of warning. I just think this one goes, the language here is a little bit too much. Um, and I would ask you to, I'd ask members not, to not support this amendment. But I do want to tell you, Ms. Representative Hurtas, that I will accept your next one. Representative Hurtas uh, renews his motion. Uh, so I, Madam Chair. I'd like to respond, Representative Hurtas. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, my emphasis on this is particularly across state lines and that people understand that you don't have the protections if, if you have possession in your vehicle. And so uh, I think this is an important amendment. And, and thank you, Representative Winkler. I'll continue working with you. But, Madam Chair, I'd like to roll call this amendment. Okay. Okay. Um, there being no further discussion. No further discussion on my part. Okay, thank you. Representative Hurtas renews his motion to adopt the A1, the A41 amendment. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran? No. Moran, no. Representative, or, yeah, Representative Olson? No. Olson, no. Representative Garofalo? Pass. Garofalo, pass. Representative Albright? Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn? No. Becker Finn, no. Representative Bernardi, excused. Representative Eklund? No. Eklund, no. Representative Hansen? No. Hansen, no. Representative Hassan? No. Hassan, no. Representative Hurtas? Yes. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein? No. Hornstein, no. Representative Johnson? Aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Cresha? Uh, Cresha, aye. Cresha, aye. Representative Liebling? No. Liebling, no. Representative Lilly? Lilly, no. Lilly, no. Representative Mariani? Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Representative Marquardt, excused. Representative Miller? Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash, excused. Representative Nelson? No. Nelson, no. Representative Noor? No. Noor, no. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, no. Pulowski, no. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto? Pinto, no. Pinto, no. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz? Schultz, no. Schultz, no. Representative Scott? Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Sundin? No. Sundin, no. There are nine ayes and 16 nays. There have been nine ayes and 16 nays. The motion does not prevail and the amendment is not adopted. Representative Hurtas, would you like to offer the A43 um, amendment and tell us about it? Thank you, Madam Chair. The A43 amendment, I would like to move that for consideration of House File 600. Madam Chair and members, uh, on the same uh, notion and order of disclosure, uh, what this uh, amendment does is basically require uh, some labeling or uh, packaging requirements with whatever is being sold under uh, Minnesota licensed cannabis distributors or retailers uh, basically would uh, have a dosing uh, information about what maximum dose quantity or consumption that would be considered medically safe uh, within a 24 hour period. And that pretty much is it. All right. Leader Winkler, do you have any comments on the amendment? Madam Chair, uh, you know, I would ask members to support the amendment. I, I want to clarify uh, at the outset that there is no overdose quantity of cannabis that is possible. Uh, that isn't something that is, uh, and we've had testimony to that in committee. It's, it's very well established. There's no overdose uh, quantity involved, but there are concerns about uh, high potency cannabis 
and we want to make sure that the public has uh, the relevant health information uh, necessary to make informed decisions when this becomes legal. And so I do accept the Hurtas Amendment. Representative Hurtas. Uh, thank you. And uh, again, the impairment is, uh, is uh, different than uh, uh, overdosing or, or having any type of, uh, you know, becoming unconscious. So uh, thank you, uh, Representative Winkler. And, uh, and uh, being that you're accepting this, I will not ask for a roll call. Okay. So Representative Hurtas renews his motion to adopt the A43 amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Oh. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. So those are all the filed amendments. Are there any other questions or comments to the uh, bill author? Okay. So if there's no further discussion, okay, Re Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, I didn't realize you were going so quickly. I thought maybe we would do a little bit more before we went to vote. Uh, so, um, Chair Wink, or not, well, I guess I can call you Chair Winkler, right? So when I'm looking at your amendment that we adopted, I'm realizing that you've now added funds and appropriations to the Office of Higher Ed and a couple other places like Deed and Dolly having to do with dual training. Now, you didn't come to the office, you didn't come to Higher Ed. So I'm wondering what is your... I realize you've been through 12 committees, but now you've just added in yet another, which is higher ed. Is your intention now to go to higher ed since you've now amended them into the bill? Representative Winkler. Uh, Madam Chair, Representative O'Neill, no, the intention is not to go to higher ed. These are pretty incidental uh, costs and obligations related to the higher education committee. And I don't expect that Chair Bernardi is looking to hear this bill. Representative O'Neill. Would you like to let this committee know what you've done as far as I see it's an appropriation to the Office of Higher Education and what is it for in relation to cannabis? Leader Winkler. Madam Chair, Representative O'Neill, this relates to training grants and making sure that training programs are properly coordinated. Uh, so this was really covered in the Workforce Committee. It's just a, it's a small change to what we had already done. Representative O'Neill. Well, Thank you, uh, Chair Winkler. I actually wrote that bill in 2015. It has to do with dual training grants. And I'm just scratching my head to try to understand what does that have to do with legalizing cannabis? If you could be a bit more specific, I think that'd be helpful. Representative Winkler. Madam Chair, Representative O'Neill, part of what we're using proceeds from cannabis taxation for is to make sure that people who have uh, been adversely affected by cannabis prohibition would have an opportunity to be trained and participate in the cannabis industry. So we have a, a variety of grants in the bill uh, related to uh, training. They also relate to navigation so people can learn how the, how the cannabis system works. We have funding for initial startup capital, uh, and we also have community-based grants. Uh, and the point here is that we have uh, a new workforce being developed. We have new specialized uh, uh, occupations and professions that need to be brought on board and prepared and we need to provide some training in order to do that successfully and the reason it's in this bill is because we think cannabis should pay for itself that's one of the core principles here and that's why we put money into it representative o'neill thank you madam chair well well chair winkler are you saying now that this the dual training program which was established it's it's a kind of modeled after the Mueller model in Germany, and it has to do with high need, high impact, high paying jobs. So for example, it has four categories. That's how it was established. It was agriculture, it was manufacturing, um, IT and healthcare. So are you saying that now you're adding the category of growing marijuana as one of those high impact, high paying, uh, high need jobs? Is that is that what you're doing? Because that's that's a little odd to me. Because that's really not in the in the uh, the mission statement of the pipeline project and the dual training program. Is is that what I understand you to be saying, Leader Winkler? Madam Chair, Representative O'Neill, the cannabis industry actually is a very high skilled, highly technical industry. We are not talking about. Uh, growing cannabis in uh, fields um, or in some sort of sloppy operation that people might associate with, uh, you know, past prohibition era cannabis uh, production. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, operations that are indoors, 
uh, operations that are highly regulated with technical seed to sale requirements involved uh, and a variety of products which are uh, being developed in legal states that require a high degree of technical proficiency. And we wanna make sure that we have people who are doing that work uh, who are well-trained uh, so that we, don't, we aren't leaving things to chance. So you might disagree about high need, uh, but to say that it's uh, not high, highly paid or to be highly technical, I think that's inaccurate. It really will be. Um, Representative uh, O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, and, and maybe this is why it needs to go through the proper committees because there actually is uh, an entire working group that decide what is in and what is not included in the dual training program. It's, uh, or you can call it the pipeline project, whichever you wanna call it, but um, it's really outside of how this entire program was set up. It, you know, it's something that I worked with with uh, Senator Bonoff when she was here and it's carried on and been very, very successful. So I, I find it odd that you're not even coming to the higher ed committee um, where that appropriation goes through. And so I, I just find this a little bit strange since you've added this into the amendment or you added this as an amendment here in Ways and Means. I just happen to be on Ways and Means and I just happen to be the chief author of the bill that created this entire thing. And I just find it very strange that you wouldn't go to higher ed to have that conversation there now that it's not just giving an appropriation so that additional grants can be given for dual training, but you're actually changing the parameters uh, that were set in law in 2015 and are actually overseen by an entire group of those that are trying to professionalize different industries that currently don't have that level of professionalism. So it's, it's a lot more complicated, Chair Winkler, than just simply giving them an appropriation. So I have concerns and I would ask that you would uh, take a trip over to higher ed. We can talk about it a little bit more there. Chair Moran had to step away for a second. So I'm gonna take over here. Um, so Representative Winkler, did you have any comment before we go to the next uh, person on the list? Madam Chair, Representative O'Neill, I just wanna be clear that this has been in the bill from the beginning. Uh, we did work on it in the Labor and Workforce Committee. We've worked on it with Dolly and Ohi. And so uh, they really changed fundamentally what was in the bill before. And uh, Chair Bernardi has not asked to see the bill. Representative Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Leader Winkler. Um, I know that you said that the bill has been everywhere. It obviously hasn't been. And my, one of my concerns is that it never made a stop in transportation. Um, and I know that Transportation and public safety, when it comes to this, in my opinion, sort of overlap. And, um, but we, we know that there is no roadside test um, for people that are driving on our roads um, that are under the influence of, of weed. So that's a concern I have. But I also had a question regarding your bill. Is there anything in the bill that addresses um, and protects people that want to consume legalized cannabis, um, but also want to continue to um, have their civil rights in regard to owning um, uh, their firearm uh, stay intact. Is there anything in your bill that addresses um, people's Second Amendment rights? Representative Winkler. Madam Chair, Representative Scott, at the present time, there is not. This is something that has been uh, brought up occasionally as we've gone through this uh, committee stops and all the work that went into the issue before. But at the present time, I don't have anything in the bill that addresses that. Um, is in general, in Minnesota, cannabis will be a legal substance. It will not be a felony, it will not be a gross misdemeanor to uh, possess or carry unless you're doing so outside of the legal regulated marketplace. Uh, and so for Minnesota purposes, you don't run into that issue. I think the, the question is on the federal side and how that would work uh, at the state level. And I am and remain open to addressing that issue if, it can, if we can do so in a way that uh, does not interfere with our ability to, uh, to um, make the changes that we need to make in terms of criminal penalties in this bill. Representative Scott. Um, thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. 
Uh, Representative Winkler, um, you're a lawyer. Um, what trumps what? If someone is, um, you know, stopped, uh, that well, let's just say that they're they're caught um, using weed or in possession of weed, and they have their firearm with them. Um, would they? What would happen? Um, since there's nothing in this bill to address it, hypothetically, what would happen to that person? Would they be arrested? Um, their firearm taken away from that? What What would happen? If you know, Representative Winkler. Madam Chair, uh, Representative Scott, if a person is legally possessing cannabis and legally possessing a firearm, uh, nothing would happen to them. Representative Scott. All right. Well, um, I, I hope that's accurate. Um, uh, since we do still have that conflict with federal law. So, um, uh, Madam Chair, thank you for allowing me to ask a couple of questions. Thank you. And I see Representative Garofalo, I assume you want to go last. So I'll go to Representative Petersburg next, unless you had something before then. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I just just gotten some comment from uh, our fiscal people and uh, Andy Lee, I kind of follow transportation issues. And he indicated on page 114, that there is uh, 4.8 million out of trunk highway cost and two, 10 new FTEs from state patrol uh, that I don't think was involved in our original targets and so forth for transportation. So is that something that you could clarify that that is actually uh, coming out of the tr trunk highway costs? Representative Winkler. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Petersburg, yeah, I mean, the fiscal note is the fiscal note uh, produced by the Department of Public Safety and those costs uh, for the state patrol have uh, been pulled from the trunk highway fund in that uh, line that you described. Uh, we did cover all of the roadway safety issues in the in the public safety committee. Uh, and I'm not aware that Representative Hornstein has asked to see this bill. Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you. My, my bigger concern is, is just the cost and how, uh, you know, we only got a small target for transportation to begin with. Uh, actually, this uh, close to five million dollars is about uh, one eighth of our of our um, target. So it's a significant piece until we get additional new joint targets. But it's just a concerning to me that all of a sudden we're we're pulling money out of transportation for this as well. Uh, so it's just something that I think um, we we were unaware of until now. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I see that um, Chair Hornstein has uh, unmuted and perhaps he wants to address the trunk highway funds and uh, Chair Hornstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, the issue with the target is um, applies to the general fund. There's uh, this is as um, Leader Winkler mentioned and Representative Petersburg referred to. This is from the trunk highway fund. So there is no general fund impact to this bill. Representative Petersburg. Well, all I would say is whatever's taken out of the trunk highway fund has to be replaced by something. Uh, and so it's it's going to come from somewhere. Or otherwise, we're just out those money dollars. So it, it may not be direct connection, but there is a certainly indirect connection. Thank you. Representative Garofalo, I believe you are the last hand up. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members. And obviously, um, this is not a partisan issue. There's members on both sides of the aisle who are in favor or opposed to House File 600. Um, I do want to thank Representative Winkler for accepting my amendment in the Tax Committee that made sure that any additional proceeds that would be collected from this would be dedicated to tax relief uh, and fee relief with a focus on lower and middle income uh, taxpayers and fee payers. I think that's a really critical component is that people understand that as we re-regulate and change the regulations around cannabis, that the focus is not on growing government and that in fact, this would reduce the amount of taxes that government is uh, compelling people to pay and it would be financed by taxes that people are choosing to pay. Um, so I'll be voting in favor of this again. Um, I think there's a diversity of opinion on both sides of the aisle on this. I'll be voting in favor of this today. Uh, that should not be construed that I'm gonna vote for it on the House floor, uh, but it is a commitment to work with you, Representative Winkler, and uh, see if we can make this bill into a format that I can vote for. But I'll be voting yes today and uh, thank members. Thank you. I don't see any further discussion here, so I'll go to Leader Winkler for final words here before we go to our vote. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. I appreciate the conversation, the time taken at the end of a long week. Um, and I would ask for your support today, and I will commit to continuing to work with members, both Democratic and Republican, to improve this bill, to make it work better, uh, and to address any of the fiscal issues that have come about. You know, we will be passing it on the House floor, and uh, of course, we'll have a couple of days to convince Senator Gazelka that he should pass this bill, and we'll be able to negotiate all of these differences out with the Senate in those couple of days. If that should not happen, we can continue to examine uh, some of the fiscal issues in the bill and make sure that this fiscal notice is handled correctly. Uh, and so members, I think this is uh, ready to go on the House floor and I ask for your support. Thank you, Leader Winkler. I'm not seeing any further discussion to the bill. So Chair Moran renews her motion that House File 600 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran? Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo? Yes. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright? No. Albright, no. Representative Becker Finn? Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi, excused. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen? Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertos. Hertos, no. Hertos, no. Representative Hornstein. Aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Representative Kresha. Kresha, no. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lily, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquardt, excused. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash, excused. Representative Nelson. Aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, no. Pulowski, no. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Aye. Sundin, aye. There are 16 ayes and 10 nays. There being 16 ayes and 10 nays, the motion prevails and House File 600 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. So thank you, Leader Winkler. And with that, I will turn the gavel back over to Chair Moran. Thank you, Vice Chair Olsen. So members, that concludes our agenda for the evening. Uh, we will be meeting next Tuesday to take up the omnibus pension bill. Staff will provide more information on that hearing. So with that, members, it is a Friday um, evening. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> and with that, we are adjourned. Bye-bye.